Right, the next type of bond that we're going to talk about, we just got done talking about ionic bonds. Uh, ionic bonds, remember, they, they occur between metals and nonmetals, uh, and it involves a transferring of electrons. So when an, ionic, when an ionic bond occurs, you have one electron or one element gives its electron to another, they become unlike charges and they attract. So it would be like if potassium uh, gave its electron to chlorine, the chlorine would become negative because it gained an extra negative charge, an electron, but now they both have full outer shells because potassium only had one in its outer shell and chlorine only had um, had seven and it needed one. So if, if uh, potassium gives its electron, chlorine becomes negative, potassium becomes positive, and then that electrostatic charge the positive, the, the attraction between the positive and the negative occurs, and that's why the bond happens. So it's a transfer of electrons, then they, then they bond. Now, the next type is called, uh, it's called a covalent bond, all right? and it involves the sharing of electrons, and this happens between nonmetals. All right? It's going to happen between two nonmetals. Just to give you an idea, once again, nonmetals, it's going to be your elements over here. All right? It's going to be your elements you know, your carbon, your nitrogen, all right, these are going to be your non-metals right, mainly that we're going to be talking about and really you can include some of the metalloids too um, but we're going to be talking about like nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, you know, chlorine, all these elements over here so when, when I ask you I say what kind of bond is occurring between this uh, these two atoms and I, I give you a formula and it'll say like uh, nitrogen oxide, nitrous, all right, nitrous nitrogen dioxide or something. Uh, well, if they're on the same side of the periodic table, you're going to know it's covalent because it's two nonmetals. If they're on opposite sides of the periodic table, you're going to know that it is that it is ionic right? because it goes from one side to the other. When it travels that far, it's ionic. When they're on the same side, it's covalent. The only exception to that is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a nonmetal and it's located in group one. All right, so if like hydrogen and oxygen bond together to form water, uh, that is going to be a covalent bond. That's the only exception. So if you've got to travel across the periodic table, it's ionic with exception to hydrogen. All right. Make sure that we're clear on that. All right. So basically, once again, metals, we, we discovered this in the gizmo that we did. Metals are not likely to, gain, or to lose uh, electrons. Non-metals are not likely to. All right. They're not likely to lose electrons. So what's going to happen is that they are going to share electrons, all right, and that's a covalent bond, all right, like I already said. Covalent bond is the sharing of electrons, and what happens is it forms a molecule, all right, that's the name of a molecule. And just think, you know, if you got hydrogen, which has got one in its outer shell, oxygen, which has six, all right, we talked about the whole point of bonding is to have a full outer shell. Well, hydrogen can't transfer its electrons. I mean, just think of that logically. The point is to have a full outer shell. If hydrogen got rid of it, it would have none. It only has one total electron. You know, a lot of these, when we do it, like if we made sodium, which is in group one, it's got one in its outer shell. Well, if it got rid of it, it's got a second, it's, it's got the second level that's filled with eight. All right? But hydrogen is not that way. Hydrogen legitimately only has one. It's the only element that has only one. So it can't lose electrons because it, it would not be stable. The whole driving point behind it is to be stable. And so hydrogen then is going to share electrons. All right. And so each, so by sharing, all right, hydrogen shares those two. Remember, the first level is filled with two. This hydrogen shares those two. All right, so their first level is filled because they're sharing with oxygen. And oxygen is also sharing those same two electrons. So they're sharing a pair of electrons. All right, and so oxygen has eight. So if you just kind of look at the circles, you can see that each one of those is filled all right, due to the sharing of electrons. A single covalent bond is made up of two shared electrons. Uh, a water molecule, for example, what we just looked at, H2O. A hydrogen atom, each contributes one electron, and the oxygen contributes the other. All right, they're each contributing one electron. It's kind of color-coded. That little, like, uh, peaches color is the oxygen. The green is the, the hydrogen. They each contribute an electron. The result, they have a full stable outer shell and that's the whole point of bonding have a full outer shell they all have full outer shells so it's not due to a transfer of electrons but rather a sharing of electrons 
Now, covalent bonding, we're going to talk about naming covalent bonds. This is goofy because covalent bonding can share multiple pairs of electrons. All right, so like for nitrogen to bond, for nitrogen to bond, we have uh, two nitrogen bonds together. Well, they each share three pairs of electrons. All right, so like they're each going to share like, so this nitrogen atom that I have in red is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're each sharing three pairs. This one in green is doing the same thing. All right, so they're going to share three pairs of electrons. That's called a triple bond. So atoms can bond, elements can bond in ways that we can't really think of because they, they can share more than one pair of electrons with, with covalent bonding. When these triple bonds occur, when the double bonds occur, this is how the dot diagram looks. Once again, they're, they're lined up kind of in a row, I guess you can say. Uh, you'll learn more about how to create like the, the angles of it and stuff. You'll do that more in chemistry. Um, but that's what it would look like if they share three pairs of electrons. All right. Each nitrogen atom contributes three electrons to the bond. All right, so since each one contributes three and there's six electrons, so there's three pairs of electrons. So each one is... is so once again, if I went back to this, these are the electrons that belong to this atom. These are the electrons that belong to this atom. And they each contribute three. All right, and so, but these are the shared electrons right in the middle. And since there's three pairs, it's called a triple bond. And I don't know how much I'm going to go into that. I might go into that a little bit. Um, but we'll see. Uh, and elements, electrons are not always shared equally. Some elements are, have a, basically if you look at it, think of it as like they're stronger. They have a stronger pull on the electrons. And so as a result of that, the one part of the molecule is going to become slightly negative. The other part will become slightly positive because the electrons are being pulled more toward the stronger element. Like water. Water is a great example. Maybe we'll even, I'll show you some examples of that in class. Uh, uh, it's, it's called a polar molecule. Um, but basically what happens is that water, the oxygen atom is stronger than the water atom, or excuse me, than the hydrogen atom. And so the oxygen is going to pull on the electron more so the oxygen end of the water becomes slightly negative where the hydrogen becomes slightly positive. So if we, if we drew a picture of the, you know, we have the hydrogen, that's what the bond would look like, and the two hydrogen the oxygen is going to pull on it a little bit more so that these ends will be negative, these ends will be slightly positive. And I can prove this to you. I'll show you something in class uh, about that. All right, same thing with like hydrochloric acid, HCl. Uh, that's slightly negative. They have a, chlorine's going to have a stronger attraction that way. All right. And once again, that's called a polar molecule. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get into. Slightly positive, slightly negative end. Think of like somebody, yeah, here's water. There's the example of water. Think of somebody that's like a, you know, they turn the word bipolar. They're extremes, opposite extremes on one end. They're really happy, really sad, really angry, really, really glad. A polar molecule is kind of the same way where it's uh, one end, or you can think of the north and south pole. Uh, one end, it's com they're on completely opposite ends. So a polar molecule, positive on one side, negative on the other side. Uh, Nonpolar is when it's shared equally. So a nonpolar molecule is when it's shared equally. Right. It's either a symmetrical or like the same atom, like nitrogen bonding together. That would be one. So just to recap, ionic bonds, it's a transferring of electrons. Right. Ions is oppositely charged ions, transferring electron, and it's a metal and a nonmetal. So it's two oppositely charged ions due to the transfer of electrons. They give up, one gives up its electron to the other and they become, become oppositely charged, and they bond. And then covalent bond is the sharing of electrons. Right? Usually the thing I like to say with covalent bond, think of co, if you co-own something, you share responsibility with that person. You own that building with someone else, or you own that business with somebody else. If you cohabitate with somebody, you are living in that house with somebody else. You're sharing that house. So you really use the word co uh, as a as a part to remember that's sharing all right co if you co-own cohabitate co-whatever that means you're sharing something with someone else all right so covalent bonding is you're sharing electrons ionic bonding ionic bonding is when they become ions 
if you know what an ion is, the charged atoms, then those opposite ions attract each other. All right. So covalent bond, it's between two, once again, between two nonmetals, between two nonmetals. Ionic bonding is between a metal and a nonmetal. Right. And then I keep going, but I'm not. Here's just the last thing I wanted to show, just a quick summary of the ionic and covalent bonds, uh, differences between them, um, what state they're in, all that stuff, so I want to put that chart up.